Hey everyone, I saw this posted on the internet and I thought that uh, it deserved a little bit of an answer here. Um, the question is, uh, you know, these are weird formulas, especially these are weird formulas for these, um, for these uh, geometrical uh, images, shall we say. Um, so what we have here are what looks like a sphere and a cone <clears throat> and a cylinder <clears throat> excuse, and a box. And it looks like supposedly area measurements. But um, make no mistake, these are not those things. This is a circle. This is a triangle with a half ellipse. This is a rectangle with half an ellipse on top and bottom. And this is a triangle with two parallel, or sorry, a rectangle with two parallelograms. These uh, lines that are in the middle do not uh, mean anything. What count, counts is the fact that we have uh, these lines here, these red, these are the bounding entities of these area formulas. These are definitely area formulas and they're accurate, but what we wanna show is first off, this is the, the uh, area of a circle is um, pi d squared over four, at least that's if you're an engineer, um, but uh, that's the same thing as pi r squared as we hopefully learned in school. Um, so the bounding area here is a circle and you're given r, the radius, and these things don't mean anything. They're just lines. Lines don't have area in and of themselves. It's just that this is a bounding thing and these lines are there to distract you. Here we have a triangle um, that looks something like this. And then we have half of an ellipse. Let's see if I can find an ellipse. Of, oh, look, half of an ellipse. And there it is. Oh, it's not gonna let me do that. Okay, fine. All right, well, we're gonna take this half of an ellipse and just show it kind of like this. Um, doesn't let me do the other side and I don't know why, but um, anyway. And uh, so we know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height, but they call this, um, the. I'm gonna call this the width. They have this as this part as B. So you can have this as B and the total thing height here. So if you talk about the base being from this point to this point, that's 2B, so half of it is 1B. So this here is base times height, or sorry, B times H, which is half of the entire base or maybe the width, whatever it is. Now this thing here is has two, they're not radii, but, um, this is an ellipse, so it's uh, got a major and a minor axis. The major axis is twice B. The minor axis is twice A. Uh, so the area of an ellipse is going to be um, 2A times 2B times pi. Now notice how if this were a circle, A would be equal to B, and therefore it would be, um, the radius would be the same. Oh, I'm sorry, do I have that right? Okay, it shouldn't be 2a, 2b. So anyway, um, so this would end up being pi times the radius squared. I'm just so used to using diameter, I would have divided it by four, which would have made sense. So pi times a times b, but since we only have half of this uh, ellipse, we have to divide this all by two. So we end up with, one half pi times a times b. If I can write that well. And so we've got bh, which is here, and then one half pi times a times b. Okay, this one here, similarly, we have a rectangle and it has a height and it has a diameter. And then we have a uh, two of these ellipses. I'll just try to draw them by hand. You don't really want that, but uh, one's on top here, one's on the bottom here, but two ellipses make one ellipse. Sorry, two half ellipses make one ellipse. So 
got like this, and the same kind of thing. It's going to be pi times a times b. But in this one, a is going to be r. So, so this is going to be pi times r times, now, half of this distance. So over here, we had b. Over here, it's going to be half of d. It's going to be d over 2. So, um, but we don't have to divide the whole thing by two because we have an entire ellipse. So we have um, pi times r times d over two, and the area here is d times h. So if we combine these things and we take d out of, you know, factor it out, we've got d times pi times r over two from this. And then we have just h here. So um, there's that. Now, I don't know how useful this is, but I guess that's the funny part there. So same thing goes with this. You've got the parallelograms. There are two parallelograms. Uh, you've got this uh, rectangle here. And then you've got, um, I guess they probably don't have parallelograms here. That was a really bad straight line. That's better. Okay, so um, here we have height here and base here. And so this uh, rectangle here is base times height. And then each of these also, you know, is uh, effectively a rectangle in terms of its uh, the formula for its um, for its area. You still have the base here, okay, but the height has to be this perpendicular line drawn right here, and that is dependent on d and this angle theta. So if theta were 90 degrees, it would just be a rectangle, and you'd just be b times d. But since it's not we have to take the sine of it. So for this one, it is b times d sine theta. For this one, it's similar, um, but the angle is outside here. So as it gets bigger, this one gets smaller. If it was at 90 degrees, it would be zero. So this is cosine. So uh, this is going to be h. So the the um, one side is going to be h, and this distance is going to be that same d times the cosine of theta. So for this one, it's going to be h times d cosine theta. So notice how d is in each one of the formulas, sorry, in these two formulas. And so um, we can factor that out, and so we end up with b times h, b times h, plus factored out the d, and then b sine theta up here, and then h cosine theta from here. The d gets factored out. And we end up with the same formula as here. OK, well, I hope that helped uh, clear that up. And uh, if you like this video, just click like. And thanks for watching.